All right. Now, here at Vion, we are tracking all the developments coming in from Chandrayaan-3. And in the latest, it has completed another crucial maneuver. The spacecraft's propulsion module and lander module have successfully separated in orbit. This follows the completion of its final orbit reducing maneuver and is getting up for the next stage. Now, the spacecraft is currently circling the moon and has separated into two parts. Now, the lander module will test its onboard systems and the propulsion module will use its scientific instruments to study the exoplanets in space. Post separation, the lander will now activate and test its electronic equipment. This includes the three scientific payloads on board the lander. Once the tests are successful, the lander will carry out its own orbit reducing maneuvers. First, it will get into a 100 by 100 kilometer orbit and then it will further reduce its altitude to 100 by 30 kilometer orbit. At this 30 kilometer ele elevation, the lander module will attempt a soft landing near the lunar south pole on the 23rd of August. Now, if successful, or rather I should say when successful, India will enter a select group of nations which have successfully landed a spacecraft on the surface of the moon. Till now, only Russia, China and the US have managed to land a spacecraft on the moon and achieve this feat. India is next in line. All right, for more on this, we are now being joined live by our senior correspondent Siddharth MP from Chennai. Siddharth. The separation has happened, it has happened successfully and I'm not surprised at all. Of course, the entire nation, the entire world is watching. What more can you tell us? What's next in store for Chandrayaan 3? So now the uh, two components of the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft are separate now. So far we had the propulsion module and the lander module which were one block. They were known as the integrated spacecraft but now that integrated spacecraft is two parts. This is something that had taken place just like clockwork in Chandrayaan-2 as well. As the spacecraft reached its final orbit around the moon which was roughly 120 by 120 kilometer circular orbit. Then the orbiter separated and the lander module, Vikram lander module separated. This time around the same thing is happening only that the nomenclature slightly changed instead of an orbiter this time around they are calling it the propulsion module and of course the lander maintains the same name the lander is known as the Vikram lander so both of them are on their separate journeys as Isro has just pointed out uh, officially the propulsion module henceforth will continue to circle the moon in its orbit for a couple of years or for a couple of months and in that orbit it will be able to con uh, con conduct its studies of the exoplanets. It can look for planets with any signs of life. It can look for other celestial bodies that have the possibility of supporting life and it will also study the Earth's atmosphere from that distance and polarization phenomena in the Earth's atmosphere. As far as the lander is concerned, this is the beginning of the job of the lunar lander because the lunar lander is the one that carries the rover also within its belly so this is the most crucial moment for the lunar lander and here is when the final phase of the mission begins this is the commencement of the landing phase of the mission because now the lander is the only part of the spacecraft that is to complete its job the other two parts have completed the rockets done its job the propulsion module has done its job of taking the craft to a certain location in the lunar orbit now the lunar lander's journey begins this is when the lunar lander you had pointed out just a while back that the lunar lander will test its electronics let me give you some specific details the lunar lander will be testing four engines on board so all these four engines are to be fired in different combinations ISRO will be testing them anytime from now these engines are being test fired to ensure that these engines have what it takes to slow down the spacecraft so the slowing down process itself is actually to slow down the spacecraft from a few kilometers per second velocity to one meters per second which is the ideal landing velocity for the Vikram lander even two meter per second is acceptable they've made it tolerant to even resist two or slightly more than two meters per second but the ideal landing velocity would be one meter per second so when an object is you know literally falling at multiple kilometers per second there is no atmosphere on the moon to actually slow it down especially when a space shuttle or when any other reusable rocket is re-entering the earth the atmosphere does the job of slowing it down and once it enters the atmosphere there is the dense layer of air and you can use a parachute to slow down but on the moon you don't have that luxury there is very thin atmosphere so the impact of atmospheric drag is negligible so the spacecraft has to use its own engines its own means to slow itself down so now all eyes will be on the lander module which is the Vikram Vikram lander and of course it's various sensors there are multiple cameras on board there are maps that are programmed on board so you might wonder how is this lander managing this entire process autonomously 
because it takes at least 2.5 seconds to communicate between earth and the lander that's the kind of distance we're dealing with 3.84 lakh kilometers so the lander actually has a great deal of software and artificial intelligence built into it such that it takes decisions based on preset commands so it will analyze its maps onboard maps and look at the lunar surface and then figure out which is the most appropriate site for landing it will activate its cameras it will activate its altimeters it will activate its sensors each one of them will work with the other to ensure that the lander gets clear decision making data to be able to execute the lunar landing on august 23rd so this is what we are looking forward to in the coming days the sensors will be tested the engines will be tested and of course uh, thereafter there could also be more images and videos that the lander will be sending from its own cameras shivan siddharth now you know there was a little confusion and a lot of people have had this question chandrayaan 2 what happened with it how far is that stage from where chandrayaan 3 is right now and when do we hit that crucial stage where chandrayaan 2 could not move further from so shivan chandrayaan 2 in fact uh, was just barely half an hour away from making history to put it plainly it was barely half an hour to 20 minutes from making history because uh, it was in the wee hours of september in 2019 that chandrayaan 2 was expected to make its lunar soft landing but barely 2.1 kilometers above the lunar surface which is the final final leg of landing when the engines are fired when the engines are in fact retrofired the engines are typically fired to boost a spacecraft but in this case the engines are fired to deboost the craft and slow it down so at that phase what happened there was a you know chain of errors it was software error it was sensor error hardware error a chain of errors in fact isro has also just mentioned that it was a chain of errors that led to loss of communication initially isro said it was loss of communication but thereafter isro understood that loss of communication was not a snapping of the communication link between the craft and its orbiter and its earth station but what took place was a fatal crash landing so the craft has to be slowed down to 1 meter per second or 2 meter per second to soft land on the lunar surface and to survive that landing but it, it what happened to chandrayaan 2 was that the velocity was much more than expected and the craft crash landed on a uh, crash landed on the lunar surface and there was nothing left of the craft is essentially a uh, uh, sort of impact like that on the lunar surface would mean fatal for any craft so if it's not slowed down effectively and not just slowing down we have to remember that the craft has to be oriented correctly its legs have to be down and it uh, has to be facing in a certain upright manner and that's when the landing can be successful so all these factors need to be taken into consideration for a lunar landing and chandrayaan 3 spacecraft is at least 5 days or 6 days away from that milestone because right. from 30 km it will be brought down to 7.3 km and then it will be further deboosted in a series of uh, braking maneuvers where the spacecraft sort of fires its engines in a way that it applies brakes effectively and then it comes down and then does the soft landing so we are at least 5 to 6 days away august 23rd is the d day for isro that right. is the day when isro will hope to make history So we're at least five to six days away from the phase that Chandrayaan two was last seen in action. So right. Chandrayaan two's lander was last seen in action, two point one kilometers above the lunar surface. So that was also what led to the heartbreak among the Israel scientists because everything had gone perfectly until that moment, and you know, in the final few minutes or seconds of that mission being accomplished, they realized that the communication link was snapped, and also the graph that was tracking the trajectory showed an a, uh, extreme deviation from the ideal path. so this uh, gave them adequate hints that the craft was not slowing down as expected and once the communication link was snapped they knew something was amiss and thereafter they analyzed the data and they understood that it was over for chandrayaan 2's vikram lander but isro we can tell you very surely that has learned has learned crucial lessons from what happened last time at least 2 years of testing hundreds of tests of the new spacecraft to ensure that you know all possible avenues of errors all possible you know uh, eventualities on the lunar surface phase are calculated right. all of that has been done to ensure that isro can get it done th- this time and ensure that india's is the fourth flag that will soft land on the lunar surface Shana. absolutely india is going to have its tiranga on the moon in a matter of days now siddharth i also want to now quickly go over this tweet that has okay i'm going to call it uh, this post on x which isro has just put out just a few minutes back we had it flashing on our screens as well uh, thanks for the ride mate said the lander module 
LM, the lander module, is successfully separated from the propulsion module and LM is set to descend to a slightly lower orbit upon a deboosting planned for tomorrow around 1600 hours. Can you explain this one sentence that ISRO has just posted for our viewers? What do they mean when they say deboosting planned for tomorrow? What is going to happen tomorrow at 400, at 1600 hours? Uh, Shivan, yeah. So, deboosting is essentially the term that is opposite of, you know, boosting a spacecraft or pushing the spacecraft further away. So, essentially, when you saw the initial few weeks of the Chandrayaan mission or even until this week, what you saw Chandrayaan 3 doing was it was pushing itself into an orbit further away from a planet. So, when it was pushing itself away from Earth, it had to boost itself. So, it had to fire its engines in the same direction of travel. So, it gains more velocity. More velocity means it's pushed to a higher orbit orbit it's pushed to a further altitude so if you fire the engines in the same direction of travel you go faster but what you do in space is to slow down a craft you can't hit the brakes like you do on a conventional vehicle that you use on earth so what do you do the same engines that you use to go faster you use the same engines in a reversed manner to go slower this is what isro calls deboosting it's also called engine retro firing it's a scientific term which means backwards firing so the spacecraft is tilted in a certain degree to the opposite direction of its original uh, direction of velocity and then the engines are fired so what happens if you are pushing and pulling simultaneously you slow down that is exactly what is being done to the same uh, spacecraft it's moving in a certain direction but the engines are fired in a different direction uh, thereby slowing it down and slowing down effectively in orbit means you are brought to a lower orbit and you are orbiting closer so this deboosting is a gradual process that will be undertaken over the next couple of days of course the first one for the lander module will be tomorrow after that, there will be other deboosting. So, in fact, this landing itself is divided into multiple phases. One is known as the hard braking, where maximum velocity of the lander will be reduced. Then it's called the attitude hold phase to ensure that the spacecraft is oriented perfectly. Thereafter, there is a soft braking phase, and then there's the lunar landing phase. So it is in multiple phases that ISRO wishes to execute its lunar soft landing. So we've just commenced that final phase where the lander takes over all those operations, and in the next coming days we'll also get to see the different functions that the lander will perform in terms of slowing down in terms of orienting the craft in terms of identifying the landing spot in terms of zeroing zeroing in on how and when it wants to commence its landing so there are so many procedures that are to be carried out in the next coming days but of course the indian space agency is fully prepared for this kind of a challenge they're maintaining cautious optimism this time around because they've learned their lessons and as far as lunar lunar landings go it's always complicated but as far as scientists are concerned that's what they're here for to ensure that these unimaginable challenges are undertaken effectively and they can put a smile on billion indians faces shivan siddharth i know i have been on you with all the details that we need to get from you and uh, pick your brain on all the information that you have on the chandrayaan missions catch your breath very quickly i want to take your view on this as well that the lander will photograph the pragyan rover which will deploy its instruments to study seismic activity on the lunar surface what's next when it comes to the pragyan rover photographing uh, you know taking photographs and of course studying seismic activity is this part is this also part of the mission what else is in store when it lands so typically this is just a repeat of what was intended for chandrayaan 2 in fact um, much of chandrayaan 3 is a repeat of chandrayaan 2 there's in terms of the equipment on board in terms of the systems on board most of them are just a repeat of what the predecessor mission wanted to accomplish because if we look at the lander and rover they're also named the same way the uh, vikram vikram lander of course a tribute to dr vikram sarabhai the founding father of the indian space program a visionary industrialist but he dedicated his life to astrophysics and to ensure that that the Indian space program benefits every common man and today it's benefiting fishermen it's benefiting common people it's uh, benefiting uh, the common people by warning them ahead of cyclones is benefiting the government so this is dr. Vikram Sarabhai's vision that space technology however sophisticated must reach the last citizen of the country and that's what it's happening and aptly ISRO has named the lander after dr. Vikram Sarabhai and Pragyan the rover which means curiosity and curiosity and intelligence let's remember that the rovers work starts after the soft landing is a complete success so as far as the soft landing is concerned the four-legged lander will have to deboost itself will have to gradually come down and vertically land just like we would see a helicopter doing so it will have to come vertically land by firing its engines in a different combination and then after soft landing 
the first function the reason why the landing is happening on august 23rd is because august 23rd is the beginning of the lunar dawn a new dawn breaks on the moon uh, on august 23rd so which is why isro has planned it at that very time so august 23rd the day breaks near the landing zone and that time they will have ample availability of sunlight so when uh, vikram lander lands it will be able to deploy its solar panels the solar panels will be able to harness the power of the sun and generate electricity likewise it will be able to charge all its systems and batteries and get ready so right. isro's intention itself is that its mission should work yes. for 14 earth days or one lunar day yeah. it's after the landing in a couple of hours that the pragyan six wheel rover will be deployed right, so and that's when the rover will start its work and within visual range of the lander it will travel traverse the lunar surface and conduct its scientific experiments shivan all right so that thank you so much for all those updates we're going to let you go now catch your breath and of course lots in store in the next week itself we are tracking all the developments coming in from chandrayaan 3 right here on beyond i'm shivan channa thank you so much for tuning in